uh, in chapter two, we talked about uh, we are gonna talk about kinematics of particles. So before starting to talk about the kinematics of particles, let me make it a little bit more general. So if I have an object in a space, something which has dimension two, a rigid body, for example, this uh, part of my pen, this cap. Uh, this object can move in a space and also it can rotate, right? If I ask you how many variables or how many pieces of information do I need to know the position and orientation of this particle, if you think about it carefully, you're going to come up with six. I need, for example, I need the location of one point on, uh, on this uh, rigid body, for example, the centroid of it or maybe this this corner of it right if you give me the position of this corner and also I need three angles rotation about the x-axis y-axis and also rotation for example about the z-axis or different types of angles but in general uh, we need three different angles to to show the location uh, orientation of it so I need the location of one point and also three angles to show the direction of it in general I need six variables to describe the position and orientation of an object in a space, which is not um, which is not actually uh, part of this this course. Um, now, let's say we don't have an object. We have a particle, a point particle. We have a point, and I want to move this point in a space. Now, if I ask you how many uh, variables do I need to describe the location of one point in the space, of course, you're gonna say three, right? If you give me X, Y, Z coordinate of that point, then I know everything about that point, right? Point doesn't have any direction, so I don't need those angles anymore. Um, now, if I restrict the movement of a particle, of that particle in, the space, uh, in plane, then just assume this point is, is moving in this plane. Now, how many variables do I need now? To describe the location of any particle in, in plane then of course you are going to need only two variables those two variables can be for example x y if you use cartesian coordinate or for example you, you can use um, a polar coordinate you can give me this angle and also this radius this angle and also this distance is going to show this location of the same particle right we have different different types of coordinates to describe the location of one particle in plane. And um, if I, if I want to make it even simpler, then let's assume this. Let's say we have just a line, a straight line, and our particle is moving, is moving on this 1D line, okay? If I have this particle which is moving only on this line, now I need only one variable to describe the location of this particle. What is that variable? It can be the distance of this uh, particle from any given and fixed point on this line, which we are gonna call it origin. So if I put the origin here and call it O, and let's say this is the, this is the particle which is moving on this line, let's call it P. Now, uh, we are going to start with this, then expand it to two degrees of freedom, movement in plane, but we are not going to have 3D movement in this course, okay? But everything is going to be very similar. So, uh, for now, let's say we have only 1D movement um, or 1D kinematics. 1D means one degrees of freedom. You have only one degree of freedom. You are allowed to move, but this particle is allowed to move only on this line. And um, to show the location of this particle, I can use one variable, like for example, S. And this is the positive direction. So if the point is in this direction, in this side of O, then S is gonna be positive. If it's in the other side, S is gonna be negative. So if you give me S, that's enough to um, find the location of the particle. Now, um, I'm gonna start to introdu introduce you um, a few important concepts 
which you already know from your physics, but we are gonna review it here. First is velocity. What is the velocity? So let's say this particle is at this point at time t, and a moment later, it comes to another point. Same particle moves from here to here, and this distance, let's call it delta s. So this is the same particle at time t plus delta t. Let's say delta t is one second or 10 seconds, anything. So uh, this par the particle is moving from point one to point two over delta t. Then in this case, we say average velocity or v average, if you call it, is equal to displacement divided by change in the time. So displacement divided by delta t is going to give you the average velocity. But if we try to decrease this uh, time interval, so just um, infinitesimally small time after after the start if i know the location of the particle if delta t goes towards zero then we can find the actual velocity or the instantaneous velocity velocity is going to be equal to if delta t goes towards zero then the velocity is going to be change in location divided by change in the time and because delta t is very small we we like to show it with dt and ds is going to be a small too, delta s is going to be a small, and we show it with um, differential element ds divided by dt. This is the definition of velocity. So velocity of the particle is equal to displacement divided by time, or derivative of displacement um, divided by uh, dt. And in the same way, we introduce acceleration. Acceleration of the particle is going to be equal to change in velocity divided by change in time. So these two are basic equations for dynamics, which, is, which are the definition of velocity and definition of acceleration. And we have, we usually have, or sometimes in some specific problems, we use a different equation too, which is independent from time. And what is that equation? If you divide these two equations together, then A divided by V is going to be equal to DV divided by DS, because DT is going to cancel out, right? So the time independent equation is gonna be this, A divided by V is equal to DV divided by DS. And if you multiply them together, you're gonna to have A DS is equal to V DV. And you're gonna see in many problems, this equation is quite useful. And the reason which is useful is first of all, we don't have time here. So sometimes in problems, we don't have any information about time. So this equation become really handy. And the other thing is V dV, if you wanna integrate it, this is integratable. If you, because integral of V dV is equal to one half of V squared, right? And you're gonna see that's gonna be really useful in, um, in many problems. So these three equations, they are general equations for a particle which is moving on a line. And there is no limit for these equations. They are always true. But the problem with these equations is they are differential equations. And sometimes it is really hard to deal with differential equations. In some specific type of problems, we can integrate these equations and find some algebraic equation. And that is specific condition which 
a lot of times we have that condition is when acceleration is constant if acceleration become constant a constant number we can integrate this to find the velocities and also we can integrate to this to find uh, an algebraic equation to for displacement same thing for the third equation so if acceleration is constant so the following equations are going to be valid only for constant acceleration then let's see how we can integrate these uh, equations i'm going to start with the th with the uh, second equation a is equal to dv dt so dv is going to be equal to a times dt but the good thing about these equations now, uh, now is I can integrate these two equations. Integral of um, v, uh, integral of dv is going to be v, right? Let's say our particle is moving from one point to another point. At the beginning, the velocity is v1 or v0, and at the, um, in the second point, the velocity is v. So uh, let's say time goes from zero to t, at time is equal to zero, velocity is v0, uh, at time is equal to t, velocity is v. Integral of dv is gonna be v, from v0 to v is gonna be v minus v0, v is equal to. Integral of a dt is gonna be equal to a t, because a is constant number we can take it out of the integral so this integral is going to be simply a times t and um, I can move this v naught to the other side and v is going to be equal to v of naught plus a times t so if the acceleration is constant velocity of the particle is going to be the initial velocity velocity at t is equal to zero plus acceleration times t okay so the second equation the second general equation which is true for any condition even if even when a is not constant uh, by integrating that if acceleration is constant we turn it to this equation now we can use this and the first equation to integrate the first equation to find uh, displacement so uh, in the second equation we have V is equal to ds divided by dt so ds is going to be equal to V times dt and V is uh, is a function of time V naught is the initial velocity is going to be a constant number right initial velocity is the initial velocity it's not going to change with time plus a times t. So I can replace this v with v naught plus a times t times dt. Now, the good thing about this is it is integratable. I can integrate this uh, differential equation. So if I integrate these equations, and let's say time goes from zero to t, and position, position of the particle goes from initial position, it's not, it can be any number, to some value to s. So integral of ds, of course, is s. From s0 to s is going to be s minus s0. Is equal to. Integral of v0 dt is going to be v0 times t. And integral of at is going to be half of at squared because a is a constant number. Okay. And if I move s naught to the other side, I can write it um, as this. S, the location of the particle, is going to be the initial location of it, s0, plus v0 times t plus one half of acceleration times t squared. So we came up with an algebraic equation. This is not a differential equation like the previous general equations anymore, right? 
So if I know the acceleration, if I know the initial velocity and position, I can find the position of the particle at any given time. Okay. And uh, with the same method, I can integrate the third equation to come up with uh, an algebraic equation for time-independent equation. So let's do that. Uh, the equation is a ds is equal to v dv. And I can simply integrate both sides of this equation. Uh, here is integral over v. v goes from initial velocity to v, any velocity. And here we have integral over s. s goes from s0 to s. Integral of a ds is going to be a times s because a is a constant number. So this side of the equation is going to be a times s minus s0. And integral of v dv is one half of v squared. From v naught to v, it's going to be one half of v squared minus v naught squared. Uh, to simplify it, I multiply these two to the other side and write it in this form. v squared minus initial velocity squared is going to be equal to 2 times a times s minus s0. So um, just to summarize, if we have a particle which is moving on a line, we have these three general equations for it. Velocity is a derivative of s with respect to time. Acceleration is derivative of uh, velocity with respect to time. And if you divide these two equations together, we come up with this equation, a ds is equal to v dv. These three equations are general. But uh, if you see in any problem that acceleration is constant, you are allowed to use these three equations. And these three equations are algebraic equations, so they are simpler, right? For example, if I know acceleration is constant, and if I know initial velocity, using this equation, I can find the velocity of that particle at any given time. Same thing here, I can find the uh, position of that particle at any given time. If I know the initial velocity and initial position of the particle and that constant acceleration. And same thing for the third equation, which I don't have any time in it. So this is going to be my time independent equation. You are going to see the applications of these uh, six equations in many problems.